Welcome, welcome. Today is a heavy day. We're making metallic bases like Void, Sudden Death, Pike. I remade this track and we're gonna learn how to make all these bases. Check this. Shut your fucking mouth. One more for the one time. Shut your fucking mouth. One, two, three, and ooh, yes. Remaking this was fun. You know, there's a lot that goes into this crazy sound, and I kept adding new things, and we finally got to a point where I liked it. Keep in mind, this full project will be on my Patreon, and all these bases will be on my Patreon, the Serum presets, and we're using a lot of Avant samples too. So shout out to them. Resampling is one huge thing so we can get the dynamics. This is actually the main thing you're hearing here. This has processing on it that we're going to get into. This is the final thing that we're listening to with this sub. I'll get into how I made this sub as well. And then the main beef are these bases. Right now they're muted because we resampled it put it right here and then we faded each one to get better dynamics these right here had really long tails so we're like controlling the atmosphere and the reverb tails on each note so that it flows better that's with the tails this is without tighter now the layer. So when I was remaking this, first thing I had to do was get that sub right. After the sub, we went ahead and did this. Now this one's going to be the main lows. That's covering all the low, mid, grungier frequencies. It's really close to the sub. Lots of distortion and some clipping. So this is controlling this section, and then these high ones are controlling the high section. These are the highs, which consist of this main patch. That's the main one, and then we have the wide version. So we're going to get into both of these, and we're going to get into the low mid grunge. These three then layer with the sub. And then we're going to resample all of these except the sub into this and start fading them out, adding more dynamics. This will have more post processing. And keep in mind, too, we're doing post processing on this group that holds the highs and the wide highs. Lots of dispersers, transient shaper, more EQ, more clipping. And then this lows is going to be separate from that. We can recolor it too if we need to. Let's go ahead and get into this one. I'm going to go ahead and turn off all the post-processing, and we'll start from this. So it's a really simple patch to begin with, and then we're just like using a lot of distortion. LFO1 looks like this. Put it on a quarter. You're going to choose a basic shape. This is a sine wave. Put it on the level, going all the way up. Then you're going to get the regular default saw, and you're going to put on bin minus and put it all the way up so it looks like this. Level is going up 59 on the LFO amount, and the level knob is all the way down. There's some effects here that we're going to turn off, so you can hear what it sounds like. This is what your sound should sound like. Turn the randoms down. And remember, we're playing note D0 right now. So it's octave zero, note D specifically. Okay, now we get a little filter. Add some movement, turn on A and B. Cutoff is at 24. You're turning it up to 47. Controlling the highs. Just focusing on the lower mid grungier frequencies. It's small right now, so we're going to add some distortion. Hard clip, 69% naturally and casually. Can you tell the difference? It's very subtle. Compressor, multiband's not on, just regular. Turning it up 5.2. Threshold's at negative 18. Pulling it up a little bit before, after. That's all we need in the patch right there. Very simple. Right? And then we're going to get overdrive and distort it. 
So before, after. Distorting it, focusing on this range, 99.6 hertz, 3.16. Dry and wet is the main thing we changed to 17%. We need to make this loud, so we add a loud rack. This is important, this is compression, OTT. We have OTT on 6 dB, 53%. Amount, saturator on 5 dB, 46%. Soft clip on. Another OTT on 20%, 6 dB. We then have an EQ8, boosting these frequencies at 167 with 0.7 Q, and boosting at 6.8 as well. Uh, 3 dB gain there, and on the band 3, it's 3.3 dB gain. Blue compressor, compressing it even more. Negative 10 dB, threshold 5 dB makeup. JST clip is turning it up a little bit and clipping it at the same time. Not making much of a difference. Then we add EQ8 to kind of carve frequencies out. Removing these mids and highs at 625, kind of turning it down here on the band at 71. Carving these out. And then we distort it more. This is a really good distortion. This is Isotope Trash. They have a new version now. I'm using the old version. I'm choosing hard limits and the heavy section. And a lot of distortion. We want this to be more distorted, but then we want to carve a lot of those frequencies out and only let these shine. Clean it up a lot. And then adding a little bit more distortion, subtle, 16%, focusing on this frequency spectrum. But we go low on the drive and low on the tone. And then adding G-clip to turn it up to 8 dB. Before. After. And if you want to see what this looks like on the frequency spectrum, you can see what that looks like here. All right, so then now we want to go and figure out what's going down. Oh, yeah, keep in mind, you see there's lows here, right? But my mids group is being sent to this mids bus, and there's an EQ8 on it. So at the, the final sound that you're hearing is being cut at 100 hertz. So technically, there should be another EQ after this one, cutting at 100. So these lows don't, don't interfere with the sub. That's really important. You just don't see that there. So please be aware that is there. Real important. After we got the low mids covered, we want to get those highs. And this is where all the metallic is going to come from. Remember the lows, this is just mono, right? This is just in the middle. But now we need something really wide. And that's what we're going to make here with two different layers. First off, we're going to turn off all the group processing. All right, cool. So the first patch. It's going to sound like this without the group processing. We're then going to turn off the processing on this actual patch. Sounds like this. This LFO1 is going to be on both levels. On oscillator B, it's going up 74, though. Monster 3 and Monster 2. Oscillator A is at wavetable position 94. Oscillator B is at wavetable position 27. These are the tones we have. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the effects and stuff so you can hear. But everything is one by one. Cool. So first we have oscillator A. Remember we're playing D0, same note. Then we had oscillator B. So low frequencies. Higher. Putting them both together, then we're adding a filter. All passes in miscellaneous. Cutoff is at 49, resonance is at 69, naturally. LFO amount's going up 7, so you're going to put this LFO on the resonance, make it go up 7. Drive is at 50%. So cutoff is like the tone, resonance is like the resonant frequencies. This adds more of the effect, and the drive is turning it up to 50%. Damp's at 19%. Adding metallic tones right off the rip. That's a good one. 
Then we go to the effects section, add some width using hyper, only hyper, mixes at 31, LFO amount is going up to. You're gonna add this LFO to that, put it up to. Rate is at 40. Now it's getting wider. We're gonna add distortion, soft clip, 72%. Phaser is gonna be on, rates at 1.5, depth 18, frequency all the way down to 20, feedback zero, phase zero. Before, after. Add a nice cool effect, then a final delay to add even more metallic tones. Feedback, 31%. You're gonna turn off BPM. Turn on link, put it on 20.39, and mix is at 32%. This will add metallic -y tones and metallic -y tail before, after. It's subtle. If you want to hear the effect more, we're going to turn this up. We're adding all this metallic -y tones, but we're not adding too much of the mix knob here because we're going to be turning it up with all this post-processing right now. So we're here. Keep in mind there's some pitch bend going on. Pitch bend range is just two, uh, but we will be doing some pitch bend in the actual bass. Just to add more movement. And then, loud rack. Same loud rack as before, the OTTs, the saturator, the EQ8, the compressor, and the JST clip, doing the same thing. Nice, next we're gonna add a multiband dynamics. We're gonna turn the low band off and only use high and mid. We're gonna change the ratio a little bit to 1.1.45 and one to 1.52, and they're both gonna be going up six dB. 47% amount before, after. Really pulling up those frequencies with the compression and the gain, and then we add a comb filter for even more metallic -y. Before, after. This comb filter is doing a lot, or combining filters now. 42.6 hertz, I put it all the way to the left, well, very close. That's a nice cool effect. And then we get a G clip and we're clipping it at zero. We're not even turning it up, just making sure it doesn't get past zero. You can look at the imager and you can see what that looks like. So when I'm seeing this, it's not completely mono like the other one, which is good, but it's not going all the way to the left or right fully. It's not wide enough as is, but then we're gonna duplicate it and turn it into highs wide, which is this. Highs wide is doing the same exact thing with the post-processing, the loud rack, multiband dynamics, the comb filter. They're all in the same settings. The only thing we're doing here is adding a new EQ8, which is carving a lot of these frequencies. Cutting at 178, we're turning down at 383, negative four dB. Making a big cut here at 1,000, 958 hertz, negative 7 dB. So before, muddy, too much congestion, EQ8 cleans everything up. We need this to blend with the other layer I just showed you. And the way we're making it wide is by turning up the voices. Unison's four on oscillator A, and unison is seven on oscillator B. all that we're changing on this patch to make it wide. And then now we will listen to regular, add the wide. Now it's sounding full, it's getting bigger. That's what we want. Now we want to add some lasery transient. We want the transient to be big, like the beginning. It needs to be like punchy. So we're going to add four dispersers. So this is going to be doing a lot. Each disperser is going to be slightly different settings. And I 
am writing in D minor. So when I choose these, I want to make sure that they're related to the scale. First one is at D. All the amounts are going to be the same and the pinches are going to be the same. About halfway, a little bit above halfway on the amount, a little bit below halfway on the pinch. D3 is the first one, our root note. A4 is the second one, our fifth. F2 is the third one, which is our third. And C3 is also in the scale, which is the fourth one. Four dispersers lined up. Still like almost putting it in another filter, adding all this crazy, phasey sound, lasery sound. It's just getting down. And then we add another transient shaper to pump up the attack, turn up the pump. So attack is 50, pump is four. Check out the difference. That makes it punchier at the beginning. EQ8 is now cleaning. Cutting at 95, turning down at 454. Now we get G clip, and we're going to be turning it. Uh, we're actually not turning it up at all. It's just stopping the signal at zero, making sure it doesn't go past zero. And then we finalize it with something really important the Voxango MSED. We're going to turn up the sides. So now the sides are going to be louder than the middle. So what we're doing here is putting focus on the sub and this low patch that I showed you. And then we're taking the focus away from the highs. So we're turning down the mids where the sub and the other patch live. And we're turning up the sides. So listen to the difference here. It's crazy. This is before. After. So we're really making it sound like it's super wide and there's still middle, middle mono signal, but it's turned down. It's not as present and as aggressive. And that's to open up and clear up space for this and the sub. Then everything can flow together. Nice. So once you have your sub separate from your bases, we're going to record the bases and resample it to this. So you'll make a new audio track. Go to resampling. Click on the record button for this. And then we want to solo our bass leads, which is up here. Then we'll click where we want to start recording, which is right here. And we'll hit record up top. Now, when you listen to the Sudden Death song, you can hear each note is separated really well. And if you visually look at the song, you can see right here, see how it almost gets completely silent after each note? It gets real quiet. And it actually goes back and forth. So it's like kind of quiet here, and then it gets quiet again, kind of quiet, quiet again. We want to make sure each note has a nice separation so that they feel real cool. <laughs> So that's the goal here. So right now, if you visually look at this, you see that there's like these tails at the end. So we're going to make a cut with Command-D, and you can use your fades now to fade it and make it better. So we'll go from this to this, which is tighter. So we're still keeping all that space, but it's like moving really fast in the mix and it's more controlled compared to, which sounds cool, but it's starting to get out of control with the tails and the space. And then when I was fading them up here, I kind of fade by filling. So sometimes it'll be more faded on some of these and some of them will be less faded. And sometimes I'll fade the beginning of some of them. So they each kind of feel a little bit different. Check it out. I'll play it with the drums too. Keep in mind too, these ones are not faded. So listen to the difference when they are faded and these two special ones that are not faded. So I'm like keeping the tails on some of them. Listen with the sub. We're 
We're going to get into the clap here soon because that's important. And the sub, we need to get into the post-processing, the final post-processing for the actual bass. So remember, we resampled it. And this sound will play with the sub only. And that's all that we're basically playing at the end. Right now, our resample isn't faded and it doesn't have any post-processing. But the old resampling has this post-processing that we're going to check out. Let's go ahead and look at that. So delete this. Now listen to this. After you fade it, we're going to add another MSCD. Turn up the sides a little, turn down the mids a little. So still separating that stereo image. Up one and down 1.5. We didn't add a high shelf to turn up the high frequencies a little. Making it come through the mix even more. We're going to add even more similar pitch automation, similar to the pitch bin that we did earlier. But now we're using a shifter in frequency mode. And we're automating this fine so that it does a little bit even more movement in pitch. It's so subtle, but it's really making a difference. So off. More movement with the pitch. And then a final little tiny reverb, adding a tiny little bit of space. 1.17 seconds at 13% just to like add the slightest bit of atmosphere in between the silent sections. So before, after, that's just to make it a sprinkle of reverb on top just to finalize that sound. Simple rhythm pattern, just a kick and clap combo. We have this hat going. Simple open hat with the kick and the clap. And then the clap is real important. We got to make sure this is long. I add some extra reverb in parallel. And I make sure I pick some claps that have reverb tails as well. So I want that to be long and punchy. Hey, you know what it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. Lots of sick videos coming soon. Write in the comments what you guys want to see next. And thank you for your support. You guys are the best. Keep it real and stay producing. See you later, guys. <laughs>